an innovative and strong-willed entrepreneur, Jacqueline Madison has forged business relationships along the way that have allowed full development of each of her professional visions. With a streamlined plan of action and relentless focus, her business plan flourish. She is an impeccable businesswoman with excellent communication skills and a sharp intuition that guides her way. She is taking the business world by storm and at such a young age. Keep a close watch on this young lady. She is going places. Originally from South Africa, born-again Christian entrepreneur Jacqueline Madison tells her unique story of how she lost everything and rebuilt her life by her powerful relationship with God. Becoming founder and editor-in-chief of Beverly Hills Magazine with no money, her message, one of faith, hope, and charity, as a spiritual success coach, you will learn the spiritual secrets of success in her new book, The Seven Oracles of Success, where you can apply them to your own life to pursue your own impossible dream. Step into your destiny and live your dream life. She's living proof that if she can do it, so can you. What are you waiting for? God's got a good plan for your life. Go for it. Believe in your dreams. Now, let's get into the interview with Jacqueline Madison. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. And today we are lucky to have Jacqueline Madison with us. To start off, Jacqueline, would you introduce yourself and tell people what you do? Yes. Hi. First of all, it's such an honor to be with you, Ed. Thank you. I am founder and editor-in-chief of Beverly Hills Magazine. I am an entrepreneur at heart, but I'm also a spiritual success coach where I teach people the spiritual secrets to success that will allow them to step into their destiny, align with their life purpose, and live their dream life just as I am doing. We can tell you know how to live your dream life, and with your story, it's just amazing that you're where you are. So let's get into that. You were born or came from South Africa and you ended up in America. Could you tell people about that? Yes, absolutely. So originally from South Africa, our parents, uh, my parents, I have two, two brothers and a sister, moved us here in 93. We were seeking the American dream, you know, and um, there was political in instability in the country at the time, unfortunately. So, yeah, so we came here and it was a struggle, obviously. It was a challenge. Um Growing up, I, you know, I, I definitely, uh, we had to endure some hardship, um, but uh, I'm really glad to be here. And I think, you know, it was God's plan for my life to be here. And we'll get more into that. But yeah, so here I am living the American dream. <laughs> now, I see that you are a person with a deep personal relationship with God. Mm. How has this helped you in your life in business personal and developing how you are and what you are today wow ed absolutely you know 
my story of success isn't one of a girl who, you know, made all the right decisions and I'm some hot shot self-made. No, it's quite the opposite. I actually attempted to, to start two other magazines prior to Beverly Hills magazine, both failed and I could never break through. I kept running into walls and I kept facing disappointments and setbacks. I just could never achieve the level of success that I knew in my heart was possible. And, you know, when I was a little girl, my aunt had taken me to church. And so I knew that I knew about the special book and I knew about God. But I, you know, as life sometimes has its way, I say I've danced with the devil, played in the dark, but there's no greater love than the light of our God. But I I started living for the wrong things, chasing money, materialistic mindset, just really forgetting about God. Okay. But it wasn't until I came to my point of failures where I, again, just was, I felt like I was running into walls that I cried out to God, this God that I knew of, but I didn't know that I believed in, but didn't have a relationship with and what wasn't really experiencing what I would call, you know, his divine assistance. Well, consciously, I wasn't um, like I am now, because when I cried out to God, it was in 2008 when the market crashed. And I, my started, my, I was also, I'm also a real estate broker. So at the time I was doing real estate and, and I lost everything. I lost everything. Uh, my Mercedes was being repossessed. I was at my parents' house. I had zero dollars in the bank, like total failure. But then on top of it, I was also uh, experiencing failure in relationships. Like I was not thriving in personal relationships at all. And so in my personal and professional failure, I went to God, what we would call a repentance prayer. You know, I, I asked him for forgiveness for things I've done wrong, if I'd done anything wrong, because sometimes we are making the wrong decisions in God's eyes and we don't even realize it. And so it actually works against us spiritually. So after that repentance, repentance prayer, God heard that because his word says he hears the cry of the broken heart. You know, he hears the repentant prayer. I started experiencing supernatural occurrences and um, signs, wonders, miracles. And I, I started realizing God's presence and I would be like, God, is that you? Like I was waking up to the fact that God is real and that I I didn't have to walk alone. I didn't, I wasn't alone. I would, in fact, I'd never been alone. I just didn't cry out to him. I just hadn't gone to him yet, you know, and my life has just become such a, an amazing spiritual journey where God has led me supernaturally through signs, wonders, miracles. I also started getting prophetic dreams uh, as I, you know, proceeded on this journey and seeking God and, and praying to him more often. And, and I still have prophetic dreams like God guides my life, you know, and, and then I, I got born again and baptized. And then that took my spiritual life to a whole nother dimension where, you know, the presence of God became even more powerful in my life. And, and he started guiding my business and, and putting on my heart inspirations. Like I was living at my parents' house, totally broke. Starting Beverly Hills magazine was completely out of my realm of possibility. But his word says, if you delight yourself in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. So he knew I wanted to start a magazine but I never in a million years dreamed I would own Beverly Hills magazine. So I looked it up. The trademark was available and I knew, wow, this was a gift from God. This was going to be a tremendous walk of faith. You know, I was going to need God every step of the way. And and I, I just prayed more. I asked for God's wisdom, for instruction, for guidance. I would ask him for divine alignments, for the right people to come around me, the right team, the right tools. And then supernaturally, God would start bringing things into my path. So I'm talking about a supernatural life here. And that's how I've been able to build Beverly Hills Magazine with no money. And now it's a, it's a thriving business that's making money. And I've got an amazing team because God has given me the wisdom, the revelation, the 
inspiration from within. Because like, I'll be folding laundry, like doing something totally mundane. And then I'll have like an epiphany of, oh, that's what I need to do, or that's what I need to say, or that's the email I need to send. God gives us a clarity, you know, because his word also says there's no, you know, he's not the God of confusion. He's not, you know, he gives us a, a sound mind and a love and power. It's just been incredible. The thing is this, is God's given me this wisdom to build the business uh, the right way. Because there's a wrong way and a right way really to do everything. And God will guide you in the right way. And and he reassures me all the time, you're on the right path. I mean, there's actually nothing more comforting than getting reassurance from the God in heaven that you're on the right path in life. You know what yes. I mean? But w with respect to the business, he, I mean, God's the CEO of the universe. He manages everything. He set up every process and system that we see that's in place, you know, night and day, the seasons, that all of it is by God's. Uh, under his wisdom and understanding. Everything is in perfect working order. And he will do the same for you when you go to him and seek his guidance and instruction in anything you want to build in your life. So he's helped me to set up the infrastructure of my business with systems and processes and, and utilizing free tools on the internet. Uh, again, he has helped me do this with no money. Yes. Okay. Because with God, all things are possible. Yes. I live, I live by that scripture. Uh, but I've actually, I've written a book called The Seven Oracles of Success that I have learned, which are the spiritual secrets to success that I've learned in my relationship with God that have allowed me to apply to my life to live my dream life. And I actually, I say in the book, if anyone faithfully wants to seek the, God's will, because I say there's free will and there's God's will, Ed, you know, and God's will yes. for your life, God's will for your life is your dream life. Because he's going to guide you on the path that's going to allow you to use your natural, your interests, the things you, you desire to do with the gifts and talents he's placed in your spirit. You know, someone might be an amazing musician or a, a baker and you just make the most incredible cupcakes or cookies, whatever it is, God's going to lead you on the path that lets you use those gifts and, and the, the passions you have in your heart of hearts. Because you were created to do that. That's right. You know, it, and this culture is, <clears throat> or the devil's created a culture where we've got to chase the dollar. But God's word says you can't serve money and God. It's one or the other. And I think all of us have, right. have served money or, or money's been what we've been chasing for too long. And, and it's failed us. It, we are not fulfilled. We are not prospered. We are n not living the abundant life God has for us where we're, I mean, God's will is to prosper us and, and, and prosperity right. doesn't, doesn't just mean money in the bank. Prosperity is a, pro a progressive trajectory of growth in every facet of your life, emotionally, intellectually, f physically, which means your health and well-being, spiritually, uh, and, and materially, financially, you know, that's right. And I think uh, people Jeremiah have forgotten. says that. Yeah, you know. You know, in Jer in Jeremiah it says that God wants good things for you, and so yeah, it's, it's within that's, God's that's will. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Twenty nine eleven. Amen. So Amen. that's that's a good verse. I have it on a coin in my wallet, and I, I keep love it with it. me. So it God says, wants my... good things for you. Yeah, he says, my thoughts towards you are for good and not for evil to give you a hope and an expected end. And what that means, the expected end Amen. means that he's actually going to give you a vision for your life that you can work towards that he will he will manifest and bring it to pass. You know, and God's word also says my people perish because for lack of vision. So God will put a vision of your on your heart. Like he's given me the vision of my life, like even for the next 20 years or more of what we will be creating together. Uh, so I started the Beverly Hills magazine eight years ago. I've been working with God for eight years to build this thing, you know, and it's, it's wonderful working with God to co-create your future. You see, this is in the book too. I, I, I set out to define success and, 
and what what it is and what it isn't. And, you know, again, everyone's been so caught up in, in money and materialism kind of somehow being a, a definer of success, which money may be a part of your destiny and, and life path. Uh, but, but it's not necessarily a requirement of, of the de definition of success, okay? Success is becoming who God created you to be. You know, you yourself are the seed of success that has to be developed and grown and transformed in, in order to thrive and blossom into who God created you to be, utilizing your gifts and talents and reaching your full potential. You know, and and it's in this place of your own personal transformation in your relationship with God where you succeed, where the work of your hands is prospered by God because you're working with him, you know, and this is the place yes. of personal fulfillment. And this is also the path yes. where God aligns you with your purpose and your purpose will always be uh for not only for your blessing, but for the greater good of all, because God is love and God considers all things in everything he does, uh, including your destiny. Like for me, for example, he inspired me obviously to, to, to write the books. I have three books, all of which a hundred percent of the proceeds go directly to my foundation, which is called the God foundation. And this is part of my purpose. Uh, and again, 100% of donations uh, given into the, the foundation go directly to orphanages and to um, outreach ministries where uh, we are continuing to share the good news of, of God's kingdom and eternal life through Jesus Christ, of course. But we are supporting orphanages in India, Uganda, Sierra Leone, um, Pakistan, because this, that's God's heart, you know. God's heart is one of charity. You know, he he says, yes, he loves a cheerful giver and is more blessed to give and to receive. And actually, this is a financial spiritual law I should share that's at work in my life that God taught me very early on was when I first started building the online magazine for Beverly Hills magazine, he encouraged me to give. So I would just give people featured articles or I would give away free advertising. I would just give. Even though I, it wasn't making money yet, you know, I just built something. At least I had something, but of what I had, I had to give because true charity is giving out of your own lack. And yes. so as I continued to, to sow in my deeds of charity, God would continue to bless that. And, and then he inspired me to start the God Foundation where we would be supporting the underprivileged. And then I would give, you know. Uh, donate of five dollars, ten, anything I could, right? But the law of tithing is at work in my life, where God says in Malachi three ten and eleven, um, bring the full tithe into my my storehouses. Yeah. Test me in this, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you so great you won't have room enough to receive it. So what? For me, as I continue to build the God Foundation and give money away out of the money that I do make, uh, however little or however much it is, you know, at least in in my heart of hearts, I'm I'm being a cheerful, generous giver. The more money I make, the more my client base grows. It's it's actually incredible to watch God's divine law activated in my life, you know. That was very hard for me to get at first, that mm -hmm. law of giving. Right. But boy, when I started giving, the flood yes. that comes with that is mm -hmm. remarkable. And I'm glad that you brought that up, Jacqueline. Yes. Um, it goes with everything has a season. And I read a few of your quotes. And you've got a quote, because even the rose had to wait to become a rose. I love that so much. It explains so much. Life, sometimes you have to wait to really understand what your true destiny is. Yes. Talk about destiny and why it's so important to seek destiny. Oh, wow. Yes, Ed, absolutely. So 
I actually do have a webinar where I go more in depth on the seven oracles of success and the spiritual principles. And then more so I have a four week coaching program, the, the dream life coaching program, where I really delve into these spiritual concepts and principles that you can come into a full understanding of. Uh, then you can, can walk in the fullness of their manifestation. One of them being destiny. The thing is this, there's free will and there's God's will. Okay. We all have God's given us life. And then the next greatest gift is free will. We can choose to do whatever we want. We can go our own way, you know, whatever. But when you go to God and you seek his will for your life, that is the preordained destiny that he wrote for you. His plan, it's a specific and unique life path that he ordained for your life that he will guide you on that he's already gone ahead to prepare the way, the doors of opportunity, the right relationships, the right to, to, to bring you to the right places at the right time, not only for your blessing, but for his glory. Because, you know, Psalm 23 says he'll lead you on paths of righteousness for his name's sake, because in your path of destiny, you're going to touch souls that you are destined to encounter for God's purposes to be manifest in and through you and for their life as well you see so we we are interconnected but if we're just kind of meandering in life in our own free will we can veer so far from the path of destiny and purpose that we can fail to fulfill it and then people wonder why they end up with disease or in divorce or in addiction which i i call all these things demonic influence you know like even you know some people can yeah. achieve some degree of financial success but then there's still the the demonic influence disease divorce destruction addiction that because it comes with a price when you follow the devil but with god he protects you from evil he promises long life to you you know, and I say the, the, you know, the rewards or the the retirement benefits of working for God and doing things his way are unbeatable. You live forever. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Plus the health That's benefits. Right. God says, I heal you of all your diseases. Like I don't get sick. I don't even tolerate a sniffle. God has taught me the spiritual authority I have uh, in the name of Jesus that we all have because of what he did because he died to, to give us, to set us free from the, the sin and evil, to give us power and authority That's over right. the devil, you know? So we and need trusting to come in that power. Amen. As our, and, and our true identity as sons and daughters of God, you know, when we get a full revelation of God's goodness and, and the dominion he's really given us over the earth, because God said, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. The enemy is ashes under our feet, you know? So, we can begin to tap into uh, the abundant life that God has for us, the, the destiny and purposeful lives that we are created to live on earth with God, a heaven on earth. You know, that's yes. the point. It's accessible to us that's... now more than ever. So what advice would you give to young entrepreneurs wanting to do something like you have done? Well, definitely you have to pursue your dreams because those are put on your heart for a reason. Even if you're in a situation where they are completely inaccessible and unrealistic, seemingly, you, you've you got to take a leap of faith and you've got to trust God. His word says, you know, don't lean on your trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path. So you've got to genuinely walk by faith. You know, there were times in my journey and even still where everything around me is telling me the opposite of what God is telling me. Like I may have people coming against me like, oh, you know, this is going to fail or whatever, because the devil's working through other people to try and block you or stop you from ever stepping into the, your, your destiny path. So you got to be prepared for that. Actually, one of the chapters in the seven oracles of success is fight for your future. You've got to put on a, a, a spiritual warrior mindset if you're going to reach for your destiny and want to see the full manifestation of your dream life, of your, your heart's desires, your greatest dreams and wishes fulfilled, because it's a spiritual battle for that, you know, yeah, just making six. money. Yeah, exactly. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, authorities and rules That's of darkness right. and spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, the spiritual realm is real. 
God is real. The devil is real. That's you know, the right. devil will prosper people who have absolutely no heart for God and he'll bring them great wealth because he'll, he can take them to high levels of publicity or fame or whatever, because he know he'll, he can use them as a, as a vessel to corrupt others. But when God prospers you, he's going to do it for his glory and he'll, uh, and for the purpose of, uh, continuing the sharing of the gospel but he'll also he'll also give you great wealth but it'll be on in 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 purity and in power not just for the satisfaction of your the lusts of your flesh and with it comes obviously the security of eternal life so there's two very different paths you can walk you know to achieve success in this world and to prosper it's the path of darkness with the devil, you know, which is filled with lust, sex, drugs, you know, money, rock and roll, all of that, a uh, love of money rather, or there's the path of light with God, which in, which is the path of righteousness, purity, charity, humility, and prosperity, which includes, you know, financial stability. Uh, so we all have a choice to make, you know, again, back to the free will thing. It's really just up to you. But so I am obviously coming from a place of light and, and wanting to encourage others to choose uh, to walk with the Lord and uh, to, to fulfill their des destiny and, and their life purpose and to manifest their dream life with him because it's absolutely wonderful. The one thing I do want to say uh, with respect to, to me specifically and, and others See, I live a very dedicated prayer, a devoted prayer life. I, I am in prayer between like, sometimes God wakes me up at like 2.30, but usually between like 3 a.m. and like 5.30, 6 o'clock. Between those hours, I'm in prayer for at least 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes more if I'm lucky. Or between 9.30 and 11.30, I'm, I'm in prayer. Because you must understand prayer is your power. It's your plumb line to heaven. It's your meeting with the CEO of the universe where we're going into a quiet secret place. You're shutting your bedroom door and you're, you're seeking God. You're, you're seeking his wisdom, his presence, his power. Because where the presence of God is, darkness cannot be. Evil cannot dwell with him. So the devil has to flee. You know, so this then opens up a portal of heaven over your life that protects you as you go into your day. And it, it will give it will allow God and, and angels to minister to you as you're walking in the throughout your day that will give, uh, give you the revelation, the wisdom, the instruction you need to to make the right decisions, to do the right thing, to be in the right place um, so that the devil can't easily pull you off your path of destiny. Because you got to be on guard. The devil will will send false blessings, That's uh, right. the wrong people into your path. His whole agenda, like God's word says, the, the thief's agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to, you know, st steal your destiny, kill your faith, destroy your your purpose. He, ultimately, the devil wants to just he wants you to go to hell with him. I mean, he's doomed. He was kicked out of heaven. He's he's do, he's doomed. So his his plot against you is to keep you from ever coming into the full authority and dominion that that uh, and revelation knowledge of who you are as a son and daughter of God, because then he's under your feet. Then you, all things become possible for you, and and you can walk in the, the the power of God. Because I say, you know, man operates in the limited capabilities of the flesh, but the man of faith operates in the supernatural power of God. And, uh, yeah, and that's just, just the fact. Yeah, it's awesome. That's right. Yeah, you can tell you're a powerful woman in the faith. And where you are in the midst of the devil's palace down there, it can be done, people. You can walk in true faith. You can have these things and still follow a guidance from God. I, I just admire you. And I thank you for doing that. So what do you want to be remembered for your legacy after all said and done? Oh, I love that question. But honestly, don't admire me. I'm, I'm nothing. I am incapable of achieving anything worthy. It's only through my relationship with God and through his empowerment within me that enables me to do anything worthy uh, of his praise, you know, or of his blessing. Um, I would hope Amen. that my life, if after all is said and done, would serve as a 
beacon of hope, a, a lighthouse of, of truth, a light of love in the world, you know, um, that could shine so others can, can, you know, walk out of the darkness themselves and, and come to the light of the love of God and obviously secure their own eternal lives and, and fulfill their own destinies. You know, that's, that's the point of life. That's the purpose of life <laughs> to be reconciled back to our creator. I say, you know, life without relationship with your creator is death. And Jesus Christ is the creator. Yes. He was the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, you know, before Jesus, before God incarnated, you know, uh, but, the Immaculate Conception, when Holy Spirit became a man, um, it, the Word was the all-knowing, all-creating, powerful sphere of light. You know, but she, but got, but he agreed. The Word agreed to become a man for for to satisfy at God's own law. You know, to pay the penalty for our sin because we rebelled against Him. And but that penalty has been paid. Jesus Christ paid the price. So now we just through faith can be justified and by uh, following the Lord. We've got to follow him. We've got to pick up our cross every day and follow the Lord. He'll lead us and guide us. The other thing is this. I fast. I live a fasted lifestyle. I eat one meal a day. I only eat fruits and vegetables. I don't drink anything. I just take communion every morning, which is a little bit of water and a little cracker which is the body and and blood of jesus christ and you know god says whoever eats of my my body and whoever drinks my blood shall never die has life in them eternal life in them so we can we are supernatural uh, spiritual beings having a temporary earthly experience but but when we receive the bread from heaven and we we bring our flesh into submission to the spirit through fasting because i only again eat between 6 and 8 a.m. every 24 hours, um, you'll find your spiritual life becomes heightened because God is spirit. He lives in the spirit. So we must walk in the spirit. We have to crucify our flesh. We have to bring it into submission. You know, and it was a process of doing that because we, we we're so used to the flesh and satisfying our cravings and our the lusts of our flesh. But the, God's word says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of God. And so if we really want to be reconciled back to God, you, you must be determined to bring your flesh into submission through fasting and through a dedicated prayer life, because we get our, our spiritual empowerment through prayer and we crucify the flesh through fasting. And this is how I'm able to hear God. This is how I'm able to get clear revelation and, and downloads from heaven, because after my, my prayer, my, my prayer time. Uh, it's not every day, but but I do frequently get like a Morse code, like a like a download into my ear, like my spirit will go completely quiet, and then I'll get like it's a download from heaven, and I know I'm getting some sort of impartation. I don't, I don't. It could be the solutions, it could be the spiritual strength, that the in, whatever I need spiritually, I'm getting, and a, a download from heaven. And this is how we walk in supernatural spiritual power. Um, because God's word also says the anointing breaks the yoke. So it's this anointing from heaven that allows us to walk in the authority over the devil where we can, we can achieve um, and succeed in everything we put our hand to because God is with us and his power is working through us. Amen. Yeah. What can we expect next from Jacqueline? Okay, so the vision for my future, which God has put on my heart as, as his destiny for me, is uh, I've also written a scripted series uh, because God will activate your spiritual gifts to a whole nother level when you continue to seek him. And so one of mine is obviously writing um, and then obviously at directing. So I'm an editor, but, uh, but as a director, I you know visually create and visually storytell. So I've written a scripted series based on my life as editor in chief. I've written, I've already pre-written a 13 episode season, one of my life, a television show I'm going to be producing. And then I have feature films, some trilogies that I will be producing in the future, some new superhero concepts and another sci-fi action adventure. Um, so these things are definitely down the road for me. And, and I'm very excited, um, for the, from a creative perspective, you know, because we're made in God's image and we are born to create, you know, God create, 
created everything from nothing. So um, by his word, that's the other thing. Our words are very powerful. So we must be very careful and diligent to keep a guard on our lips. You're either speaking life or death. So speak life, speak creative words, speak affirming words of what you want to see made manifest into your life, you know? And I always do that. And it's, it's a very powerful discipline to, to train yourself in. But I did want to address your point about the rose, even the rose had to wait to become a rose because, you know, the process of becoming who God created you to be is not overnight. You know, it's, it's a life journey. It's a, it's a, actually it's an eternal journey because even when we get to heaven, God's going to continue to grow us and we're going to change and, 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 and ascend in levels of enlightenment and understanding because God's unsearchable, right? So we'll, there's so there's for eternity, we'll be learning new things about life in the spirit and life with God. But Patience is a very important virtue, and um, and I I encourage all of us to learn to be more patient in waiting for God's will and for His instruction, because when we try to rush ahead or do things in our own self will, we can really harm ourselves, and um, that's God doesn't want that for us. So learn to. Wait upon the Lord. He's, those who wait upon the Lord, you know, renew their strength. You know, and blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. So um, take time to slow down. And I say silence is golden, obviously, because angels whisper in, in our silence. So spend more time in God's word, in prayer, just resting, you know, in the spirit of God. And um, you'll get the revelations and the epiphanies that you need because it was in this place when I had nothing, I was totally broke and all I had was time. Uh, I sought God. I was praying. I was watching sermons. I was reading the Bible. I was just trying to get to know the truth about God. And it was in this place where he, he visited me. And he manifested himself to me and he gave me all the business ideas and opportunities that I'm now living out and that are now manifesting for me. So it's in the secret place. And that's why God's word also says, you know, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. <laughs> we fear him because obviously he's God. He holds our life breath in his hand. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding that. But yeah, it's in the, this is the real secret is that you can manifest and live your dream life in your relationship with Jesus Christ, the God of heaven and earth. The new age secret out there, that's a doctrine of demons. It's completely false and it will lead you down a path of disappointment. It's a complete lie. Absolutely. Jesus Christ is the God of heaven and earth and your relationship Amen. with him will allow you to live your dream life. And God will give you the desires of your heart if you d delight yourself in him first. He says, seek my kingdom and my righteousness and all things will be added to you. And God is not a man. He doesn't lie. He is faithful and he is true. And I'm just a girl who's activated my faith. I believe God. And that's why his word manifests for me. And it will do the same for you. So. Go for it. That's right. There's power in the faith. A power and, in the and faith. When we Amen. Walk, when we walk in that faith and stop relying on our own understanding, it gets way better. It's yeah. not about the money and how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. That's and right. there's parables about that. How can people hook up with you, find you, and what would be a... Uh, call to action for people so a couple points that i just want to make before i give you the closing statements god's word says faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things hoped for it faith is an actual spiritual tangible substance that it's this it's the spiritual building blocks of our future it's it's impossible to please god without faith but when you activate your faith and you start taking action in faith, like you have no money, but you move forward and you start building something, knowing God's going to meet you halfway because God's spirit marries your faith. And then his power and glory can manifest and move in that place of faith. And then I have a personal quote that says, you know, money doesn't define you no matter how much of it you have. It's what you do without it that does. So 
Forget mm. about money. You don't need it. You need faith. God will bring the right resources. He'll line up the right opportunities, people, places, and things. Seek him first. Wow. So that's really my call to action is, is activate your faith. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and pursue your, your impossible dreams. Go for it. Because with God, all things are possible. <laughs> and all things are possible for those who believe. So I just, I love you. I love you all. I'm praying for you all. And I just encourage you to, to really, to go for it. Go for it. Because God will never let you down. Man will disappoint you. But God says it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The other thing is God's word. You know, people say, oh, follow your heart. Absolutely do not follow your heart. God's word says the heart is deceitful above all else. Who can know it? Mm -hmm. God's word says that it's not in man. It's not within himself to direct his own life. You guys, w there are forces of good and evil that that manipulate uh, and, and influence our minds and our our decisions you've got to understand the reality of the spiritual realm around us but we can be led by the spirit of god in the right paths because god's word says the sons and daughters of god are led by the spirit of god and god will lead you on the right path and that's what you want so go to him walk the right path fulfill your destiny and live your dream life because i'm doing it that's powerful. Okay, people, I will leave all of the show links in the show notes. And we want to thank Jacqueline for being with us today. Yeah, Powerful yeah. message. Thank you. I love you, brother. Okay, you can visit my website at JacquelineMadison.com, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E-M-A-D-I-S-O-N.com. You can find the magazine, God Foundation, if you want to give. You can find all my books, webinar, and the Dream Life program. God bless you all. Thanks, Ed. I love you, brother. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.